Oh, hey YouTube, I'm Jean, and welcome to Crypto Pigs. Today I'm going to be doing my PTMG analysis on Chainlink. This video is actually a bit unique, and researching it was a completely different experience than what I'm used to. I hope you like it. Also, the support has been amazing. Please click this button, like, and subscribe. I appreciate all your support. Well, let's get started. So what is PTMG? Of course, it's the problems I solve, the project idea, the potential for generating revenue, the team, the marketing, the market cap, the short slash long-term goals of the project, and then I'm gonna wrap it up with a summary. So what problems is Chainlink trying to solve? Well, before Chainlink, smart contracts could not communicate with external resources on their own website. Data feeds, APIs, and the bank system payments are unreachable to smart contracts without a middleman like Link. This limitation is inherent in how smart contract data is secured on a blockchain and is due to the way that consensus is reached by miners around the blockchain-based transaction data. This limitation will remain for all smart contracts for the foreseeable future. So what's the project idea? Chainlink is a secure and fully decentralized Oracle network. The Chainlink network is a decentralized network of Chainlink nodes which sell the usage of specific data feeds, APIs, and various off-chain payment capability directly to a smart contract. What about Chainlink's potential for generating revenue? The Link token is used to pay Chainlink node operators for several different services. As you can see, first is the retrieval of data from off-chain data feeds, then formatting of data into blockchain readable formats, then third, off-chain computation, and then last, guaranteeing uptime. So one of the most important parts of this analysis is the team. This team was actually fairly unique. The team is tiny or they didn't really display the rest of the team. I did get in contact with a community manager and he said they are hiring. So I'm assuming they don't have anybody else to add to this website. So I'm just gonna talk about both even though neither of them are superstars. First is Sergey. He's the co-founder and CEO. His experience is literally all co-founder and CEO experience at different companies. But on a positive note, their company has been around for three years. So next we have Steve Ellis, who is also co-founder and CTO. He does have co-founder experience and three years of software experience at Pivotal Labs. I wouldn't categorize either of them as superstars or even stars, but there is a but. Their advisors are great. So their first advisor is Ari Jules, has over 20 years of experience at RSA Laboratories at Scientists and Chief Scientists. So definitely a superstar with that experience. Next, we have Andrew Miller, technical advisor. I couldn't find him on Facebook because his name is so common, but he gets a star because of his past advisor roles with Zcash and Tezos. And of course, one of the best superstar technical advisors I've seen is also an advisor for QuantStamp, Evan Chang. Worked at Apple for 10 years, reached senior manager there, is now director of engineering at Facebook, and has been there for two years. Superstar experience if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Next, we have Hudson James, another superstar technical advisor. He is a developer at Ethereum for the past one and a half years and worked at USAA for two years as a software developer. So superstar experience with uh, working at both of those companies. Another superstar advisor. I mean, seriously, this whole team seems to be superstars <laughs> or whole advisor team. Brian Leo. Uh, he has some big companies where he has had significant positions, but the one that stuck out to me was Microsoft. He has two years as a marketing slash product manager. So literally all this, all their advisors are superstars. So maybe that makes up for their lack of team, but they really, really need to start hiring someone and hopefully can find some stars to actually put on their team. The only one that wasn't a star was Jake, and I only didn't give him a star because I didn't even cover him because he's the token sell advisor, so he's pretty much done at least with that aspect of the project. So I completely ignored him. It's still a ridiculous advisor team, which is a positive. And now for their marketing. Again, this is where it gets kind of sketchy again. When I say this was a unique experience, it's because of what I saw with the team, the marketing, and what you'll see a little bit later. It's just, they just seem to be lacking on so many different important things. I've talked to some people, they're like, it's not a big deal. They're still doing big things, but we'll get into that. 
So their Telegram, super active with members of the community and their community manager, Rory. The Twitter, they have no Twitter. That Twitter that they have on CoinMarketCap is smart contract, not Chainlink. I even asked the community manager, Roy, just to double check. He said, no, that is not Chainlink's Twitter. Medium, they have nothing. Facebook, they have nothing. So I kind of have a big issue with this part. They are lacking on almost all fronts with updating their community, except for Telegram. Not only do they not have social media active, they haven't updated their website. If you go look at their token sale timeline, you can see they didn't even update this. September 19th, they never they never attached the token sale to begin or complete. Then you have right here also, never got completed. It just makes you wonder, what the heck are they doing that they can't even take the time to update their website or any social media? Why aren't they hiring more people at least for that? Come on now. So I know I told you guys I was going to make a new slide for competition, but the competition was very small. Orcalize and Mobius, which is an ICO that actually starts November 8th. I highlighted this one and I almost didn't do it, but I'll talk a little bit about it in the summary of why I'm highlighting it. Now their market cap, we're looking at $82 million in market cap, currently sitting around 23 cents, around 4,000 Satoshis, compared to 47 cents, around 11,000 sats on October 6th. They have a 350 million circulating supply. The volume is around $2 million, 1 billion total supply. Their exchange is Binance, which is a great exchange. I'm, I'm at least, I'm glad they're on there. So next is the short slash long-term goals. And here we go. No roadmap. Okay, this isn't as surprising. I've actually seen a few that don't have a roadmap and it's not actually that big of a deal. A lot of people actually don't like the roadmap so that people don't get mad at the community if they don't reach milestones. But it's just so annoying in terms of an investor to not see any direction that they're going as a company. So that's my rebuttal to that is like, if I were to give you a bunch of money as an investor, I want to know you have a plan as a company, a direction. If you go off the rails a little bit or you need to edit it, then do it. No big deal. At least I know you have goals that you're pushing for. I'm sure they do, but to not post them on the website is very troubling to me. So to summarize Chainlink, this coin is super hyped up by many, but to be completely honest, the more research I did on the token, the more I wanted to run. Granted, this is just my own research and my own opinion. Everyone is entitled to that. I would love to hear what you think in the comments. And if you check their market cap, it's still fairly low. And if they are able to get everything together, get good team going, then they could be great. What worries me though is Mobius. While researching Chainlink, I ran into Mobius. They seem to be a much more organized. They have a bigger team. Uh, their team, I mean, it pretty much has to be better because there was no stars or superstars there. I did not check that out, so don't don't think I'm saying that Mobius' team is better. I don't know because I haven't researched it. They have a bit more rewards for token holders. So it'll be kind of interesting to see if either of them come on top or which one or if another company Hopefully my summary isn't disappointing you and getting you angry. If you find this to be helpful at all, let me know. I want to hear your comments on Chainlink and Mobius even. Do you want me to do a video on that? I was kind of thinking of it. Do you feel the same way I do or do you feel this coin has tremendous potential despite all the flaws that I just showed you? If so, then why? I want to thank you for your time. Remember to invest wisely. Also, click like and subscribe. I appreciate it. See you next time.